Hi everyone. Hi guys. Lovely to see you again. Thank you for joining us. Um, we'll just continue our journey of the Art and Faction finalists. Odyssey. Our Odyssey. They will write a book about this one day, yeah. uh, our journey. Um, and again, the house today, I don't really know. Nope. I, 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 know, I hadn't heard this of is quite exciting. Heard of this So we've been exploring the finalists for the Art and Faction Awards uh, this year. And one of the great things about that is lots of perfumers we haven't heard of, lots of yeah. houses we hadn't heard of. So this is a relatively new house. This is um, Atelier Oblique. Um, which is based in um, Berlin, um, was launched uh, uh, in 2017. They now have 11 fragrances. Uh, all of the, the perfumer, um, have we got, oh no, so we've got two different perfumers. We're looking at two fragrances because this house has been nominated in the independent category twice. That's very good. So the first one is uh, Beton Brut. Uh, the perfumer is uh, Serge de Oliver. Oliveira, Oliveira, is Oliveira, that? Yeah, is that Portuguese? I gave up. Sure? I, I messed up. Sorry. Yeah. Um, a Robert a, a perfumer. So I have had these samples. So I bought the whole discovery pack. Da, 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 da. It's a nice looking discovery pack. Actually. It is a handsome little pack. I quite like the uh, understated but uh, functional wooden packaging. Yeah. So I've had these samples for a few weeks, almost a month now. Joe has not tried them. I'm a virgin to these. You are. Um, so I'll break you in uh, gently. Thank you. He, uh, you're going to get Joe's first impressions, and I can tell you, you a little bit more about <laughs> what it's like. I need to go to Berlin. It's very, I very cool city. Perfume in Berlin. Um, so, Ooh, so, that's a bit quite big. so, uh, beton means concrete. Uh, brut, we think of brut as meaning um, dry, as in something you see on champagne, but it also means raw. So this concept of raw concrete, almost a kind of. Uh, uh, kind of archi architectural aesthetic. Concrete and poetry, raw beauty, beton brut is a scent like a bed of clouds that nestles against wide windows. You can read more about um, uh, this on the website. So this costs 130 euros for 50 mil EDP. Very pleasing. Um, I, th I think it's quite interesting. I mean, I get, I, I can get the concreteness in a fizzy way. Yeah, I. My first thought. You were thought, underwhelmed. <laughs> a little <laughs> tiny bit underwhelmed, but not in a bad way, just because it takes me back to a fragrance I used to wear. Which is? Which is the Issy Miyake Bleu. Okay. Which had this beautiful, sort of bluey green, herbaceous mm -hmm. yep, thing. Yeah, it definitely does have this herbaceousness. I like it, it's, it's pretty, but it doesn't. It doesn't wow me yet, but I'm, uh, this is first very first spray. Yeah, I mean, and it, I it like it. Feel, it's, it's pretty. It feel it definitely feels like we're having a, a modern perfume. Yeah, this is very very modern. Nothing sort of French classical. No, but there, there are about. things. There are definitely things you can recognise. I can definitely get this kind of slight uh, wet concrete. Um, I've also put it has it like a wasabi like fresh greenness. Ah. Can you get kind of a wasabi? I don't know if wasabi is listed. Um, well, def I definitely get something quite bright and green. Yeah, something, something in that territory. I find it qu it's quite, it's quite sort of greeny, bluey, soft edged, like uh, confectionery, like little jelly beans or something. A little bit, yeah. You get something a bit like a flavour of apple rather than an apple. I don't mean apple, but yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, something is an artificial version of something. Um, there's um, space apples. With it, so there's definite, I got this on skin and I think I'm starting to get it ready. There is a slight mustiness. Yeah, definitely. Of, uh, of mildewy kind of mustiness. And this cropped up in both oh, the it's fragrances. It's getting more interesting already. Um, and I think it's, it's a kind of cashmerian. So cashmerian often gives you this um, kind of musty muskiness of the kind of like, um, you know, something's gone a bit stale, kind of almost mildewy. Which kind of gives you this kind of slightly brutalist modern feel. Yeah, I, I find it. I find it quite easy going though. I don't find. I don't get the concrete thing at all. Really, it's interesting. I just. It, yeah. it's something in my imagination just isn't triggered. I guess there's something. There's just something a bit playful to the start, isn't there? There's something fizzy. There's something kind of round and slightly soft, isn't there? Yeah. Whereas you that was it. It had it had a softness and a, and a sort of very sort of very easy going happy go lucky quality mm. now again I've said after about half an hour there's a bitter leather quality which starts to, to 
creep in. Ah. And you may be getting a hint of that. So it felt like it was a quite, an, what weird I've said, the opening smells quite modern, but the leather which creeps in is a very classic leather. It smells like isobutyl quinoline, which is um, used in lots of classic, classic leather fragrances, like oh, Cabochard by Grey. Yeah. Um, which creates, you know, that, that bitter leather goes quite well against the, the slight, there's those green notes of a sort of green fizziness at the beginning that I thought I can get of that kind of zesty. It's interesting um, me more and more actually as it goes on. Mm. I did think it was like when I wore it, 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 there's quite a lot to draw you in. That, yeah, I'm, I'm starting already to get this kind of like blue leather. Yeah. Like an a sort of electric blue leather. I mean, definitely a kind of leatheriness coming in. Do you not get a bit of violet leaf as well? A little bit. Petrally violet leaf. That's actually interesting. That, that's not quite what I expected it to do. I think it's one of those, on the first spray, you think, hmm, there's quite a modern, slightly generic quality. That's to, what to, the to first the thing I got was a little bit like, oh, low DC blue. Yeah. Which, by the way, I really like, and you should, you should try if you haven't. I, I think it's a good perfume. And I think, and then the cashmere is quite prominent uh, in uh, this fragrance. As I said, that kind of musty, stale, mildewy woodiness. Um, and I said, and I think um, the wetness res mm. res recedes and becomes, oh, okay. this becomes increasingly dry, almost as if, you know, this concrete has been baked in the sun. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's, a, mm -hmm. that's an interesting way of thinking about it, actually. Um, as it went so on, it so I'm talking... It changes its nature. Three to four hours in, I felt that that, that leatheriness then took on a quite slight saffron quality. Um, so we're coming back to saffroline, which is quite a modern leather, as opposed to the isobutyl quinoline, which is more old school leather we got in the beginning. And then at the, towards the that's end nice. of the dry down, I really felt it was about this cashmere and mustiness. And that was joined by a, a quite synthetic oud patchouli base. Um, which, I can already detect that a little bit. Which so it's going to go in that direction. Which, which, it just it felt a little bit over familiar that like, cashmere with with a synthetic, um, oud base, at, at the yeah. end. Um, I'm liking this phase. I'm, I mean, I, I'm not really down to the base. It's mm. not on skin, obviously, but I did think there was quite there was, was quite quite a, quite a big development. Quite interesting storytelling. Um, even if at the very outset, I can get this kind of impression of wet concrete, or, or concrete's being rained on. Yeah. With some kind of green growth. Making me sneeze as well. Pardon me. So he's allergic to it. it it's, Getting a patchouli starting to come through a little bit more. Yeah, that dusty kind of patchouli yeah. goes with that feeling, I think I said, of, of kind of drying down. A little sort um, of hint of white chocolate, maybe. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, or possibly. something yeah. in that realm. But I mean, this is my, yeah. my imagination is not quite accurate. Well, no, I mean, you, your imagination is whatever you want it to be. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I like I like this phase of what I'm getting mm. much more than the very very start. It um, Elec I'm, sort of elect I'm getting a, like a gentle electric leather, but friend it's very friendly. It's not it's not like Lone Star Memories or something like that, no. which is like soldering and mm. tanned leather. It, this is it's just sort of gentle, quite playful. It's a um, playful fragrance, I think. It is. It, yeah, it's a playful. It's um, it's not. And it, I don't feel it's, you know, we talk about a natural and synthetic um, a, a bit. So this definitely smells very synthetic, which is fine in that it's obviously a very kind of conceptual kind of storytelling fragrance. Um, but I, it, it does feel 130 euros for 50 mil EDP. Mm. That, that it, it, it smells, it doesn't smell that expensive. Mm. Um, Agreed. I, I think, you, you know, other things, uh, that smell of this level uh, are, are, are a bit cheaper. So I'm slightly surprised um, by, by the price mark on this one. Even though it's quite interesting storytelling. It's pleasant, it is pleasant. Should we have a quick- Let's try the other one. Let me just jot down what that was. So that was- That um, was a Beton Brut. Beton Brut, yeah. Um, so we're, we're sticking with the perfumer's name who we can't pronounce, sorry, Serge de Oliveira. Um, this is uh, Light Falls. It's also 130 euros for 50 mil EDP. Light you Falls. Go. Thank you. So this is all about the, the play between light and darkness. So we, 
Um, again, for me, the first impression is quite familiar. I'm getting a big ray. I'm, I'm talking in such wanky terms yeah. now. I'm getting a big ray of sunlight. And then through that sunlight, it's raining kind of shaving, pencil shaving. Definite pencil shaving. Definitely kind of incense. Yeah. A little bit in a sort of Mark Buxton mm. yeah, yeah. school. It is, yeah. I mean, I, I, I quite like it. It just feels like something I've smelt quite a lot before. It smells like the kind of thing that like, Comme des Garçons were doing quite a lot, like 15 years ago or so. Yeah, and a similar sort of patchouli to the other one lurking in the background, maybe. Yeah, well, I think that... I, wish, I don't get it quite so much, but I, on, on skin, I just felt there was a slightly harsh woody aroma chemical, which is a bit screechy. When I wore it on skin, I was a bit like, oh, God. Um, Do you know, it's, it's very nice, but this has been done a lot. This, yeah. This, I mean, even on the, my original Gucci Poirom from back in the day, this woody, shaving, peppery, incense-y so they, thing. They list Timur pepper as, as one of the notes, and that seems to be something which is very in vogue at the moment. It's in the new Tedemez, which is not smoke yet. It's ah. in Herbois yeah. Imperial, which is a recent Quentin Bish fragrance, somewhere between uh, black pepper and pink pepper, which seems to be quite popular. And I, I definitely can get that somewhere between black pepper and pink pepper, incensiness, cedariness. Um, and uh, on skin, to join this kind of woody incense, there was a slightly syrupy, fruity note. Mm. Which, yeah. um, Interesting. which I wasn't a huge fan of. Again, so, sorry to come back to like synthetic versus natural words. It was a very unnatural smelling um, yeah. fruity note. And they can sometimes penetrate everything in a way that no, no natural smell. I don't, I'm not talking nature versus synthetic, but a natural rounded yeah. put together thing would do. That's something that mm. just kind of cuts through everything. I don't. Yeah, I mean, we were I talking about, kind of for instance, Sas uh, Sac um, Saskia by uh, Grande Flora by Christoph Laudimer. Uh, not saying that that smelled natural, but it gave you the real impression of real things. Yeah. Whereas I think when the fruitiness comes in here, it's a bit more like cordial um, syrup. Um, yeah, it could be, that could be a little bit too persistent and cloying. Yeah. Um, and, and also... It, I like it. I mean, it's, it's nice, yeah, it's, but it doesn't excite me in any way. Yeah. I also get... I got a little bit of... Um, there was a... Again, this is something I got on skin. There was a kind of musty muskiness, which could be the cashmere again. This slightly mildewy... Um, yeah, kind of uh, muskiness, which is not funky. It's just a bit um, dull. Um, now, I felt about four to five hours in, I did like it more. It, about four to oh, five okay. hours, this kind of um, slightly overdone incensiness kind of receded uh, and it became a little bit more ambered, which, which I... Like, and it was quite a sticky, you're actually getting a hint of it now, a sticky labdanum, can you get yeah, a little bit. The, the kind of the first suggestions of it? Um, and so I, I, I said, that I think there is a, a, a transition up here, I've put from screechy to cuddly, um, <laughs> which is maybe a bit harsh, um, but I was just, I was a bit, I was saying to Joe, I was just a bit surprised this had been nominated um, for the Art and Olfaction Awards. It doesn't feel that, it's not. It's not a bad perfume at all. Um, it, it, but it has been done. It's in been done ways, a lot, and I think I think 130 euros for 50 mil EDP is overpriced. I think there are other things out there which are better, and I don't. I don't blame the perfumer really. I, I maybe just blame the Art and Fashion Awards for. Yeah, I mean, as a piece of work, it's nice. It's, it's well. It's well done. It's a, a nice. But if perfume. you think about some of the, the why, things we have spent over the last couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> This is not in the same... I mean, basically, in short, I would say now, in the year 2022, 21, 20, whenever it is, you don't want to be making stuff that smells like the kind of Comme des Garçons... 15 years ago. From, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, it's not exactly the same, but it's in the ballpark. Mm. And by all means, if you're going to do something really new with it, like having something like this and then revolutionising it with, uh, you know, uh, like a weird petroleum note or, a, or an ambergris or, or something that just takes it in a, do a different direction. Yeah, yeah. But this... I still get the pencil shaving, pencil shaving, patchouli, woody, patchouli, patchouli amber, yeah. yeah, yeah. 
I wouldn't I wouldn't want to necessarily wear that, but I don't mind it. So there we go. Um, yeah. Not our favourite fragrances we've tried um, so far uh, out of these mm. finalist nominees. Uh, but if you no. may agree with us and think we're talking absolute rubbish, you know, as we say, we are not really trying to offer objective reviews. All we're doing no, is just chatting, talking yeah. about what we think and what we like. So just an opinion. Yeah, nothing more. So. Until next time. Bye. Happy sniffing. <laughs>